The gentleman just explained the dilemma that we are in and where the proper recourse or result should go to at this point and what the solution that has been presented to us is not the correct solution. And that alternatives such as allowing the free market to develop, lowering taxes on capital gains and the like, allowing the private sector to develop an alternative, which has already been occurred through the RSC and other forms here in the Republican conference, is perhaps the better avenue to pursue. Let me, though, take the next three or four minutes to answer the question that many in the American public are asking tonight. How in the world did we ever get here? Well, many financial analysts will tell you that the underpinnings of the problems that we're facing today in the credit markets on Wall Street that are affecting the homeowners on Main Street go back a number of years and apply to the situation with the GSEs. That is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And the suggestion is that had they been appropriately regulated over the years, we would not be in the severe financial crisis that we're in today. So who was raising those red flags years ago to say what should have been done? Well, if we go back, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six years to 2001, in fact, it was the Bush administration that began raising some red flags. In 2002, in their budget request, they declared that the size of Fannie and Freddie is, quote, a potential problem and could cause financial troubles, and either one of them could cause strong repercussions in the financial markets. That was back in 2002. 2003 is when I joined uh, Congress and served on the Financial Services Committee. I immediately began to call for uh, a step up in regulations of Fannie and Freddie. The White House at the same time was doing the same thing. They said in 2003, the White House was warning about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that they needed an upgrade in what we called world-class regulation to address something called systemic risk, a risk that could spread beyond just the housing sector. In the fall of 2003, the administration was pushing Congress hard to create a new federal agency to regulate and to supervise both Fannie and Freddie, these government-sponsored entities. They and I and other members from our side of the aisle said we need a strong world-class regulator to oversee their um, operations, of their safety and soundness. Matter of fact, I recall a hearing when the then uh, Secretary of Treasury, he was Secretary Snow, came in and he made that point as well. But I also remember him getting a lot of pushback from both sides of the aisle, but it also from the gentleman who is now the chairman of the Financial Services Committee. It was back on September 25, 2003, when um, he was in the minority at that time, but he's now the chairman of the Financial Services Committee today. Barney Frank said, quote, there are people in the country who are prepared to lend money to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac at less interest rates than they might get elsewhere. I thank those people, he said, for doing so. I must tell them that I hope they're not doing that on the assumption that things, if things go bad, I or my colleagues will bail them out. We will not. Well, the legislation that is coming, has come through in July did exactly that, bailed them out to the tune of over $200 billion. The legislation that the gentleman who came before me just speaks about will be bailing out the financial industry in the tune of $700 billion. Mr. Franks went on to say, I think it is clear that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are sufficiently secure so they are in no great danger. Well, of course, we see what has happened to them. We just had a hearing on them today, and we, we, they are now in conservatorship. They were in great danger. They were in danger of systemic risk, which has eventually brought them down. He also said on that day, I don't think we face a crisis. I don't think that we have an impending disaster. Well, we all just heard the President of the United States on TV last night, and he described the crisis that the United States is in right now. Whether you call that an uh, impending disaster, whether we take action or not, or not, I don't know whether Mr. Franks would say, or those who pushed back to Mr. Snow, who pushed back to the administration who pushed back to those of us on the side of the aisle that said that we need to move forward and try to address the issue of systemic risk. Unfortunately, those efforts did, did not come about. We never got the world-class regulator in over the GSEs until it was too late, and now we are left with the situation at hand. The gentleman who came before spoke of the dilemma that we have faced with. A Hobbesian choice of sorts is the way that it presented last night. Either you do this or everything will fall apart. Well, we suggest that there is an alternative to the proposal that the administration has proposed.
We humbly suggest that alternatives should be considered in a thoughtful and thought-out process, not one that is rushed to judgment, not one that would put the American taxpayer on the hook, one that would ask the private sector to take their lead and take the step in the process as well. We would ask for the time in order to engage in that process. With that, I yield back. Mr. Pence of Indiana. Mr. Gohmert of Texas. Under the purpose of the gentlewoman from North Carolina, rise. Permission to address the House for five minutes, Madam Speaker. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker.